we've consumed most of our life support system. Most of the fish, most of the forest, most of the food. And now there are seven billion of us. We look around the world and we look at the environmental trends that, that I've been tracking for decades now. Deforestation, soil erosion, aquifer depletion, collapsing fisheries, grasslands turning to desert. I mean, you go down the list. CO2 levels rising, temperature rising, ice melting. We've not turned a single one of these trends around. I think we're in trouble. Probably more trouble than most people realize. What does it take? What type of calamity has to happen? If this is not a time for mass civil disobedience, then I'm afraid we're never gonna do it. We need to be the revolutionaries. We need to be the eco-warriors. Nobody else is gonna do it. Every time there's been a mass injustice, humanity has risen up and done something, changing the world against seemingly impossible odds. And if we're gonna survive, we're gonna have to do something similar only bigger. When you look at the world, every economy in the world is built on growth. Now, when you have a finite planet with limited resources, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out you can't grow your way out of problems. First of all, you've got to admit there is a problem. The Earth is sick, very sick. And even if it was not caused by man, you would sit around and do nothing? And clearly, we're already exhausting the capacity of the planet to provide for us at our current level of uh, population and consumption. That's what's driving a lot of the damage, is this consumption and the desire to earn money to be able to consume more. It's hard to see how that's going to change. I think it's going to take some very severe shocks to the system to change that. But if it doesn't change, it's hard to see how, as a, as a species, ultimately we'll survive. The U.S. has one of the biggest carbon footprints in the world, and concerned youth are taking a stand. Congress that sits behind us, the United States Capitol, has all of you on its doorsteps today. Young people are an incredibly powerful constituency. We are also a generation that just has so much at stake. The creation of a revolution is the only chance we have at this point. And so we got to stand up. And, and the good news is there are people already standing up. This is what democracy looks like. Tell me what democracy looks like. These are criminal enterprises. Yeah. And the only way they can get away with what they're getting away with is by corrupting our public officials and subverting American democracy. They're very big, they're very powerful, and they own the courts and the politicians. The only thing that we have is our bodies, our willingness to stand up to them. The environmental movement is the largest movement that's ever existed in the history of human civilization. Rallies across the country have successfully opposed at least 22 new coal power plants, the single biggest source of carbon emissions. The rules of the road right now point toward disaster. Uh, if you just follow the rules of the road, you go off a cliff. So what activism is about is changing the rules of the road. So we begin to point the whole society back toward a positive outcome. So uh, we have to change how we are as consumers, but we also have to get involved as citizens and as community members to really make a difference. I joined La Via Campesina, a group of poor farmers from across the Americas that had come to Cancun to fight for the rights of Mother Earth agreed to in Bolivia earlier that year, in what was called the Cochabamba Accord, giving Mother Nature rights above and beyond corporations. People of every background, rising against injustice, fighting for a brighter future. The revolution we we'll start with the revolution of the mind, the decolonization of the mind. We have to recover our memory that we are a people who can best survive 
in our planet, in the planetary solar system, when we work in solidarity, not in competition. Canada has the biggest reserves of oil in the world, but it's not liquid. It's mixed with sand, dirt, and earth, making it intense and costly to extract. But with high oil prices, the tar sands become immensely profitable. We're literally dying right now. Cancers are destroying our people in numbers that the Centers for Disease Control can't even explain it how many people are dying as a result of the pollution. They don't care about people. And corporations, of course they don't care. Corporations aren't a person. They don't have thoughts and feelings. Along with emitting more carbon dioxide than any other single thing on Earth, the tar sands are also destroying the habitat of the Canadian lynx, whose life cycle could be a warning for our species. Lynx are some of the most elusive cats in the world. They live almost exclusively on snowshoe hares. They're such awesome predators, the hares are no match for the lynx. And every 14 years, most of the lynx die off because they've wiped out the hares. After a couple of years with few lynx, the hare population recovers and the lynx population starts booming until they wipe out all the hares again and die off themselves, booming and busting every 14 years. I think fundamentally, there's a lot of us. The, there's more people on the planet than any other large species probably in the history of the planet. We're going to increase from nearly seven to probably around nine billion by 2050. So there will be more mouths to feed. It's just a lot to bear. And there is this perception that our consumption can grow and grow and grow in some way. Um, into the indefinite future. People must take back power. We have to take back political power. We have to formulate a system where progress and real democracy holds, where people articulate what they want and they make it happen. Where we don't cede our sovereignty to a few politicians who occupy state houses, and begin to be at the beck and call of transnational corporations. We've lost our liberty, we've lost our sovereignty. The world is now being run by corporations. You're confronted on a daily basis with bad news and you have to keep a degree of optimism and ultimately I think you have to have a belief in human beings because much as we are the problem, we are also the only solution. Every one of these numbers represents a death by climate change that has occurred just this year. We are here asking for justice for these people and to end the suffering and ask purely for our survival. That is what we are here to ask the negotiators for and that is why we have done this action. 2,356, 2,357, 2,358, 2,359. Our ambitions, our wants, our ignorance. Are there too many of us? Are we consuming too much? If everyone lived like we do in the developed Western world, we'd need six Earths to sustain life. Clearly, we can't keep living this way. This is the ultimate test of mankind. It can't get worse. Short of an asteroid slamming into Earth, I'm there to remind people what this is about. It's about people. There are people out there that you are condemning to death. And they are innocent. Don't say it's up to your government, or oh, if we had a better government, then elect a better government. So we're not going to let anybody off the hook now. No one's innocent in this, only the kids. Having empathy for something beyond yourself and acting upon that is a revolutionary act. And that's where it begins. It, 
it begins in love and it begins in caring for something beyond just your own selfish existence. That is revolution to me.